Hey guys, it's me, Mario. And today we're going to continue Score the Winged Stallion. How are you guys doing today? Hope you're doing well. <coughs> Alright, let's turn on this music a bit. And let's start. <clears throat> if you have the same book as well, you can read along if you want to. And here we go. Facing the Winged Stallion. Chapter 8. The beast burst through the trees, crackling cracking small trees like like twigs. Epos lifted her head and let out a terrified squawk. Seth ran out from behind Score, his sword held in front of him. Tom didn't have time to draw his weapon. Luckily, Elena was quicker. She shoved a foot in Seth's path and sent him stumbling to the ground. He was climbing back to his feet when she swung a brand at him. It crunched into Seth's temples, temple, and he crum crumbled to the forest floor beside Epos's nest. Tom cut down a vine and drew it to Elena, threw it to Elena. Time up with this, he called. Elena was on Seth in a flash and bound his wrists with the vine. Quickly, Tom, she shouted. There isn't much time. The vines won't hold him for long. A roar filled the clearing and Tom turned to face Score. The beast drew back his lips. Huge yellow teeth snapped the air and the beast drew up over the trees, flew up over the trees. Tom dashed away from the flame bird's nest. He wanted to put as much distance as possible between Score and Epos. He was halfway across the clearing when Score dived at him. Tom ducked and was surrounded by the beast's sting. Stinking breath. Over here, shouted Seth furiously. Tom spun around to see that Score's attention had turned to Elena, who was spinning Seth to the ground. The beast drew towards her, eyes flashing silver, sparks onto the forest floor. Hey! shouted Tom. Leave her alone! Epos bravely tried to lift herself out of her nest, but sank back defeated. Tom picked up a rock from the ground and took careful aim. Score was almost on top of Elena now, and she scrambled back from Seth, who writhed in the ground on the ground. Tom drew the through the rock and it hits the side of Scorza's head. The beast crashed to the ground, snorting in pain and anger. He charged towards Tom once more. There was no time to think and nowhere to run. All Tom could do was roll, over, roll out of the way. He found himself hidden behind a thick tree trunk. Elena, Elena, meanwhile, had returned to Seth's side. Leave, leave him, Elena, Tom shouted. You have to hide. She looked up and then back at Seth, uncertainty written in on her face. Then she seized their enemy under the armpits and began to and began dragging him towards the edge of the clearing, away from Epos's nest. Tom heard the crunch of Scores' 
hooves and the undergrowth and uh, slen and slatted himself against the trunk. There was no way he could face his face of this beast on the forest floor. He wouldn't even be able to get close to Scores's head. Maybe it, maybe if he could uh, get higher. Tom looked up the trunk. Score appeared at the side of the tree, sniffing the air. The purple feathers of his wings ruffled, and his flanks rose and fell. Tom edged around the trunk, keeping out of the beast's sight, then began to climb. The bark of the tree was chorus and cracked, with plenty of handholds, and Tom was as high as Scorza's back. When the beasts finally spotted him, when the beast finally spotted him, Scorza's eyes opened wide. Sparks flashed against the trunk, burning the burning the wood. Then the beast opened his mouth and roared. The yellow teeth snapped at Tom, but he managed to pull his legs out of the way. He drew his sword and swung it at the winged stallion. It glanced off Scorza's head, but did no damage to it. Climb higher, shouted Elena. You have to get above him. Tom scrambled up to the to a hollow in the trunk and climbed in, uh, into it. Score tried to unfurl his wings, but the trees were too dense. The beast retreated to the bottom of the tree, out of sight. For a moment, Tom, sir, Tom felt safe. Then the branches began to tremble as though a strong wind were blowing through them. Get out, Tom! Elena screamed from below. Tom caught sight of her terrified face through the leaves. She was sheltering by another tree, her foot resting on Cesta's back. Then Tom realized what was happening. The beast was tearing down the tree. You have to climb down, shouted Elena. The beast attacked the trunk again, and the branches were where Tom was crouched shook violently. Wildly, scattering leaves below. The whole tree creaked. Tom seized his sword and started to scramble down. But it was too late. The tree leaned over, swinging wildly one way, then the other. Tom felt his stomach lurk, turn. A loud splintering sound echoed in the clearing and the trunk began to topple. Scythe skeething? Skeething through the foliage, green leaves blurred past Tom's eyes. He had only one chance. He pushed off with his feet and jumped. The ground rushed towards him. Tom landed on the mossy carpet, bending his knees to cushion the the blow, and rolled away behind him. <clears throat> behind him, the tree slammed into the forest floor. Birds screeched, screeched, and dirt filled his eyes. Score was already galloping towards him through the debris. Tom drew his sword. He lifted his shield and drew himself at the golden hooves. They thudded against the wood of the of his shield as he swung his sword, slashing Scorza's leg. The beast took a few steps backwards, and Tom 
and to Thompson's horror, the wound disappeared before his eyes. The skin was unblemished again. Beast that doesn't bleed? shouted Tom in confusion. How am I supposed to defeat this? You didn't think Marvel You didn't think Marvel would make it easy, did you? Seth crackled. Cackled. Face it, you and the pose are going to die here. Aim for the head, shouted Elena. It's the only way to stop him. As the beast kicked out, Tom dodged sideways to avoid the blow. It, if reaching Scorza's head was the only way to save Epos, then that was what he would have to do. But how can I get close enough? He thought desperately. As Scor reared again, Tom saw his chance. He darted under the wheeling hooves and threw himself at Scorza's rear leg. Wrapping his arm, wrapping his arms around it, Score snorted and ducked and ducked, kicking out with both his back legs. Tom felt his teeth rattle in his head, and his sword fell from his grasp. Tom! cried Elena. His hands came loose, and he was thrown through the air. He smashed into the ground among the leaves of the fallen tree, and a sharp pain stung his forehead. Blood trickled into his head, his eye. Score thrashed at the ground with his hooves, then charged towards him, spreading his dazzling wings and lifting from the ground. As his, as he hovered in the air, strings of saliva drooled from his jaws. Kill Tom! bellowed Seth. Tom, get up! shouted Elena. Tom struggled to his feet and faced Score. The beast's wing, the beast's wing tips scattered golden rays of light across the clearing. Tom looked around for his sword or something else to fight back with. There was nothing, but Tom wouldn't give up. Not now. Not after all they had been through. As the beast, beast's hoof sliced through his face, Tom pushed out his shield. While there is blood in my veins, he yelled, my will will never triumph. And that was chapter 8. Facing the Winged Stallion. Oh my god. <laughs> that was uh, something. <laughs> Hopefully I was loud enough to be heard. Hopefully I was. But yeah. Ugh. Hope you guys have um, a lovely day today. I sure am. And I... Uh... Yeah, man, I'm so sweaty. Mm. Hope you guys help me get to 50 subscribers. We're really, really close like extremely close so they're like three subscribers left to 50 so half a hundred almost that's pretty epic <sighs> well I don't want to have this video be like 16 minutes long with just, with just me talking <laughs> so i hope you guys like subscribe and hit the bell if you guys are interested in more beast quest <laughs> that's all for now so 
Ta-ta.